Before we start with the business at hand today, let me first tell you and give you my condolences for your colleagues that were viciously attacked and murdered this morning. It should bring in clear focus to you how dangerous your job is when you go out in these different communities and you knock on these different doors because there are people out there that are as eager to hurt you as they are us in this day and age. But I want you to know this, that I'm still one of the idealists that understands the reason we have a free democracy is because we've got a free press that can go wherever they need to and say and do whatever they need to to make sure there's justice in the world. If you come in this county and you feel uncomfortable, I'll make sure that you're safe while you go out and get your story. Even if the story that you're doing is one that would be calling us into compliance for whatever reason, I'll make sure the deputies are there to make sure you're safe while you do your job. Now, I'm also concerned for copycats, and you all need to have your antennas up for the next little bit because there will be someone, someplace that's mentally distressed that goes, hmm, I never thought of that until today. So be careful out there and understand that we appreciate you and we respect your job, and we know that we've got the democracy, the free democracy that we have because of the work you do every day, and we're going to make sure that you have all the protection that you need so that you continue to do a tough job and hold people accountable whenever they don't do what they should. So with that, let's get to what I consider one of the more disturbing cases that I've ever brought to you. You've had a chance to go to first appearance. You saw, you saw Daniel Dunphy. Daniel Dunphy was arrested on 51 counts by us in May. And here's how it occurred. A father in Elgin, Illinois, was contacted by a school counselor because his daughter went to school. She was very sick. She was very stressed. She was not herself. And she was an emotional wreck. What the father and the school counselor had determined was that she had been sextorted, extortion, if you will. And ladies and gentlemen, you won't believe what our investigation showed. So first off, my thanks to the Elgin Police Department for digging in and doing what they should have and notifying us. We found Daniel Dunphy in North Lakeland. We put him in jail pursuant to a search warrant. His parents just couldn't understand that. Oh my goodness, he's 21 years of age. You don't people do things such as that. The state attorney filed direct, Brad Copley, Jerry, who is the lead prosecutor in Jerry Hill Special Prosecutions. Our state attorney filed 426 additional child porn image charges. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me explain to you that those 426 child porn charges were made from real victims, and he did that through extorting these children. He did that with what we know to be eight victims throughout the United States at this time. We certainly believe there are more. So let me tell you what he would do. He would assume a name. For example, Bo Mason was one of his names. And he would start to groom children who he found online. And he would start off by talking to them and trying to get them engaged him in conversation. And he used this fictitious name, which was a real person that was under investigation up there. And he goes, I swear to you, I don't, my name's Bo Mason. I don't know what you're talking about. And sure enough, even though the charges have nothing to do with him, he was a victim of this extortionist as well for using his name. But at the end of the day, he would start out communicating with these young ladies, and then he would say something like this, if you don't send me a sexually oriented picture, a nude picture, then I'm going to superimpose your face 
on this piece of pornography and I'm going to send it to all of your friends. I'm going to send it to all of your social media friends. Or he would say, if you don't send me nude pictures of yourself, then you know what I'm going to do? I've got your address, I've got where you live, and I'm going to come harm you or I'm going to harm your parents. He would threaten them. The next thing he would do is he would tell them, okay, now that I've got this photograph, I want a video clip. And I want it to be three minutes long. And here's what I want you to do. And he would describe all kinds of horrific, graphic, perverse things that he wanted these little 13, 14 year old girls to do to themselves. And if you don't do this, then I'll take these pictures and I'll put them out for the world to see who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, we have video clips of these babies screaming and crying and begging him, don't make me do this. Don't make me do this for three minutes. Aha, you only did it for one minute. Now, I'm going to put this video clip out. That's why he's charged with 426 additional counts. He would also pretend to be, take on the persona of a female as he would approach some of these victims. At the end of the, grant, end of the game, he was extorting them. Now think about it when you were a 13-year-old child. One of our deputies said today, you know, my 13-year-old is absolutely mortified at the thought of somebody saying something about her. Now imagine this guy who creates this initial relationship and then tells you, you will do these things or I will do this. And those girls, those children, those 13 and 14 year olds did the most horrible things you can imagine because they thought if they didn't that they would end up splashed all over the social media scene. And of course, as you can imagine, we have evidence where he's done exactly that, where he took some of these victims and he showed them to the world. He sent them to other people. Now I want to take out a, a, just a second to tell you. I think the board of directors, the CEO of Apple and everyone else who wants to create a computer that we can't legally get access to with a search warrant is a co-conspirator in that. So find some of them and ask them if they want their 13-year-old children treated like other children are be, being treated and extorted across this country today for sexual gratification and sexual purposes of deviants, of people who are criminals. Do you know, it, when you f do the math on the charges, he could receive 7,155 years in prison. If you would have seen what my detectives had to see, you would agree that 7,155 years is not long enough. That's what this guy did. Our state attorney has filed direct and here's the pages and pages and pages of evidence against him. And what's significant, even though we have recovered all of this information, we believe there's data out there that we still have yet to be able to recover. We're not naive. We don't believe for one second that there's only eight victims. But you can see, as I've said before, and listen to me clearly, how important these sex predator stings are that we engage in. Our goal is to find these deviants before they make victims of children across this nation. 
And my detectives have been very, very successful at that and will continue to do those investigations aggressively as we can because we've got to stop these people before they make victims of all of these children. Think about that. 426 child pornography clips and or images of child porn created from Lakeland, Florida on victims across this nation. Prison's too good for him, but that's all we can legally do for him, and we're going to work together to make sure he stays there for just as long as possible. Are there any questions? That number, the 400, uh, you said, is that just because of how many pictures and videos between the eight victims? That's different counts, yes. Different counts. That's what, we're tr what we have discovered and what we've charged. For, for each image or each video clip, you can charge a count. And the vast majority of those are different images. And, and think about that. That's over what? My math's not too good, or I would have been a scientist someplace or a doctor. That 50, 50 images a piece of these, of these babies, of these little girls? There were, fifth, the, there were 51 the first time, the 50, 51 no, charges. I'm talking about the, just the, the actual kids, the number of kids affected. Eight children this time and one other, a total of nine. Okay. A total of nine victims. There were eight that we discovered after the fact. We had one to begin with. We've discovered another eight. And we believe there are others scattered across the nation, too, that we need to know about. And if they're not victims of this particular deviant we're talking about, there are others doing the same thing out there today. And some of them are being protected. These victims that you all had to reach out to, were they reluctant to come forward? Did some of the parents tell you know that they were victims of this? They, they were cooperative. They were scared. They were, they were frightened. We reached out to our ICAC partners across this nation, and they are professionals at dealing with the victims of these crimes, and certainly they're very, very cooperative with us. And it's important to know that, that we recognize that these young children are victims in the most significant sense, and we're very delicate and very gentle with them, and we want to make sure not only that they have the appropriate counseling to help them weather being the victim of this most horrific event, but to, no, to find other victims out here and make sure they get the appropriate counseling and hold either him or whoever else may be doing this to children accountable. It's so important because if it weren't for a very wise school guidance counselor and a parent who checked their children's phone, went to law enforcement, these victims would still be here. He would still be running wild. And my experience is these folks become more prolific at what they do, but they become more violent, they become more dangerous, they become more sinister. So they elevate their aggression with experience and with the fact that their normal, outrageous, deviant sex no longer satisfies them, so they would extort children to do even more. Now there are those that are gonna say, oh, my child would never do that. Your 13-year-old girl faced with being humiliated in front of everybody in her world may do a lot of things that we wouldn't think to protect herself, and she certainly would do those things to protect mom and dad if they truly thought this guy had the ability to show up and kill mom and dad. You called out the uh, tech companies. What specifically were they not handing over? The tech companies are creating instruments now where we can neither tra trace terrorists or trace criminals or trace sex predators 
even with a search warrant, with probable cause, with what our rules of protecting the community require and also allow. A tech company that does not, that creates an instrument where they claim that no one can breach it is doing nothing but encouraging terrorism and murder and rapist bisexual predators against children. That's exactly what they're doing. And I hope they have to go home and explain to their wives or husbands or significant others or children that, oh, by the way, uh, through my business policy and, and decisions, uh, I'm putting you at risk to be physically abused, sexually abused, and exploited sexually across this nation and around this world. Is there any reason to believe that with you all got these additional images and videos through the phone and the computer, had any of this been deleted or wiped to the point where maybe there's stuff you didn't uncover? We have uncovered everything we're in possession of at this time. We don't know what we don't know. And we don't know if there's a device that we didn't find or was at another residence or somebody threw in the bottom of a lake. We don't know what we don't know, but we are comfortable that if we can successfully get him any place close to 7,155 years, we've done our job. And even with that potential sentence he's facing, you'd still like other victims to come forward if there's anyone we, this is about finding the victims and helping them. It's also about charging him with some more crimes that he's committed because he should be held accountable for every one of his deviant criminal acts. But more important than charging him anymore is finding the victims, finding these children, these babies that probably aren't sharing this with anyone and aren't receiving any counseling and we want to find them and make sure we help them. That's our first obligation is to take care of the victims. And that's why the sexual predator stings are so vital because every time we arrest one of these guys, we got to them before he got to these victims. And there are no boundaries anymore. There's no more city lines and county lines and state lines. These predators seek us, seek out these victims across the state, across the nation, and around the world. And wherever they are, we're going to chase them. Okay? Thank you all very much. Be safe out there.